Hello and welcome to MSD Animal Health's Partners in Reproduction series. This is the last video in the series. Uh, last week you would have heard from Catherine who was here on Ryan's Farm in Oula talking a bit about Sensub and how it's made a difference here. Uh, my name is Eleanor Brady. I'm Ruminant Veterinary Manager with MSD Animal Health. I'm here today with Dennis Howard, who's the vet with Munster Bovine. You know, we've a lot of nice beef calves here behind us. Um, have you noticed any recent trends in the last yeah, few years in terms of beef? Ryan's Farm here is probably typical of the trend really they used uh, a lot of sex semen so most of their heifers were born to sex semen very little dairy bull calves I think only a handful and the other big trend I suppose is a pile of beef calves here we're quite early early March here and a pile of beef calves so they were using beef semen right from the start of the breeding season which obviously using the sex semen allowed them to do. Sex semen still as popular as ever? It is sure it's been growing over the last we've, we've seen it kind of doubling year on year for the last number of years didn't quite double last year, um, about 70% growth. So the trend is probably more and more people using sex semen. Um, and in general, the feedback is very good. People are actually, it's been performing very well. And some of the data coming out of ICBF that it was actually almost on par with conventional semen. But I suppose we're not comparing like with like there, you know, um, the, the, the odds were probably stacked in the sex semen's favour, so we, we can talk about that when we're talking about cow selection and all the rest. Yeah. yeah, like, so that is, I suppose, that's the one thing I suppose people probably do wonder when it comes to sex semen, you know, which, what animals do they choose, um, and how can they exactly maximise conception rates with sex semen? Yeah, so it is it is a different product to conventional semen, so there's less semen uh, sperm cells in the straw, so, you know, 4 million versus 15 million. It's after going through the sexing process, so it is that bit more, fragile and it's not going to last as long inside in the cow as conventional semen. So I suppose with that in mind, we, we're trying to do as much as we can to stack the odds in, in the sex semen's favour because it is expensive so we want to get the best results we can. Um, and part of that then, is selecting the, the most fertile cows, so selecting cows that are calved long enough, had no issues whatsoever calving and then I suppose the next thing is the heat detection to make sure they're actually in heat and getting the timing right. Yeah that's the thing with sex I suppose people want to make sure that they have everything well managed and everything well thought out so in terms of heat detection you want to be fairly on the ball then? So we need to be more precise first of all we need to make sure the cow is yeah. in heat you know for any doubt uh, a conventional straw and then I suppose because it, it's not as viable, it, it's, it doesn't last as long inside in the cow. We don't want to go too early in the heat, so with conventional semen it's going to last, so if we go anytime during standing heat up to 12 hours after, we're fine. With, with sext, we want to make sure we're into the second half of heat, so the cows are actually gone off heat. Yeah. And I suppose the next thing with sex semen that's slightly different is it's already after going through this process called capacitation, mm -hmm. uh, which for conventional semen takes about 10 hours inside in the cow. That's already after happening in the lab. Because you, you probably have seen many benefits um, in terms of the technology we have, like sense hub colours, or have a positive impact on, on trying to get sex semen into uh, the oh, right animals. Absolutely. Yeah. So anything that's going to help heat detection, that it's going to be more accurate. Um, and then, especially with sex semen, to get the timing more precise. Yeah. So whether it is, you know, very good heat detection with tail pains, scratch yards, crayons, and obviously then the technology, so that's working obviously 24 hours a day, seven days a week, time. It's another pair of eyes on the thing, you know. It is, and yeah, it is. Then you have like, you know, obviously breeding windows that are very, very easy to use um, in terms of trying to get the right timings for sex semen and conventional semen, semen so anything like that helps. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, anything that, that drives the, the accuracy um, and, and that you're not missing cows, submitting more cows, it's going to have yeah. a positive impact anyway on conception rates and fertility performance. Saving time, energy and money for everybody. So in terms of sync pr protocols then Dennis, um, you know, are they just being used in problem animals or where are you seeing them being used? They're obviously increasing in popularity. They are, yeah, not yeah. just problem animals. Obviously, you know, vets use them to, to treat non-cyclers and, and animals, you know, not seeing bullying and all the rest, but they're, it's definitely been increasing. You know, fixed time AI synchronization has definitely, definitely been increasing over the last number of years especially in heifers. So obviously the heifers are often in out farms. They're, they're often difficult to, to manage in regards to heat detection. So those fixed time AI programs, it allows all that kind of reactive work of heat detection and drafting to become planned. So you follow the program, prescribed by your vet, and make sure your technician is booked at the end of it that they have the semen that you want. So if everything is followed exactly and the planning and the facilities are good, um, you know, you can get very good results at the end of it. It's all about, I suppose, planning in advance and, you know, reducing stress. Oh, absolutely. Planning with synchronization is so important to make sure 
everyone is on the same page, everything is followed as it should be. And, you know, obviously facilities, enough help on the day because you know, quite a large number of animals needing to be AI. Sometimes it's not just one technician, but a team of technicians. Yeah. And equally, you need enough help on the farm to make sure that the crush is kept low, that the technician, they can get their gear close to the crush. You should be using a team of bulls, if so. If you could have animals divided by what bull they're getting. So anything to make it easier, quicker and more efficient, you're going to help the technician and ultimately, hopefully, achieve the best conception rate you can. Obviously, there's so many different sync protocols out there, so you want to be making sure you're liaising with your vet and using the one that's right for your, the right animals at the right time. Yeah, and any yeah. mistake along the way, if an injection is mixed up or the device isn't pulled at the right time, um, it's disaster. If everything is done correctly, they, they can work extremely well. And the end result is you have a bunch of heifers that go on calf early in the breeding season. They're going to get a chance, another chance within 24 days. So whatever's going to repeat um, is going to repeat, you know, 18 to 24 days. Mm -hmm. So if at all possible, you know, heat detect them, uh, get another straw on them, make sure they have an easy calving, that they're in calf to approve an easy calving pull. Yeah. Um, and you know, the big advantage is you get your heifers calving in early, early in the calving season. Yeah, get them done and dusted. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of your heifers, then obviously you want to get them to a target weight and make sure they're actually ready to go. Yeah. Any advice there? Oh, sure. The one thing about synchronization, it doesn't compensate for you know heifers no. under target weight yeah. or bad weather or whatever else or, or disease. So. You need to have all those things right, try and make sure your heifers are weighed, they're up to target weight, they're out. Ideally, they're out with a couple of weeks on good grass, on a rising plane of nutrition, and hopefully if you can achieve that and get everything else right as well, you get good results. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us for the last video of the Partners in Reproduction series. If you want to have a look at any of the other videos, they're available on Agriland for watching.